Good evening. Good evening, racing fans. Welcome back into another edition of the uh, Perfect Trip Roundtable here. We're excited this time to partner with In The Money Media as well as Harris Hoosier Park to discuss their big evening of racing coming up here on Friday evening. It'll be Friday, September 23rd, 2022. It is Caesars Trotting Classic Night. There's, of course, plenty of other stakes on the card. There's uh, plenty of highlights there in particular. Uh, guests will enjoy the very best the sport has to offer with an estimated $1.4 million in purses and plenty of Grand Circuit action racing on the card. And again, it is, of course, highlighted by the fifth edition of the $200,000 Caesars Trotting Classic. Uh, we can also witness the world's fastest standard bread as Bulldog Hanover makes his highly anticipated return to Harris Hoosier Park for the first time since his Dan Patch Stakes victory. And that will be in the $175,000 Harris Hoosier Park Pacing Derby. And in addition to the Grand Circuit Racing Action, for anyone out there in Indiana and live on track, it can enjoy handicapping contests, cash giveaways, food trucks, family fun entertainment, and much more as part of the Harris Hoosier Park Community Night at the races during the Caesars Trotting Classic card. So as always, happy to be joined by my panelists here to discuss this fantastic evening of racing coming up Friday out there in Indiana. So first to introduce Ray Catolo to my right. Ray, welcome as always. Hey, it's a pleasure to be to your right and not to your left. I think you were below me last time, so uh, maybe we should have threw you down. I there. did nothing to you last time. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, and Mike for Bozy of Now Who Picks. And come on, Mike, you gotta love the shirt I'm wearing here as well. Hey, represent. I think I think Garnett has one of these too somewhere. I do. He, he's too busy wearing his Bill stuff though. After Holy that win, I probably would too. Speaking of Garnett Barnesdale, he's right there below me, and uh, yeah, he finally got to that Bills game. I think for the first time in three years, and uh, that 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 was about as easy as you could come against Tennessee. Yeah, the, the fourth quarter was really boring. Actually, if I if I knew for sure that I wasn't trapped into the lot where I where I was parked, I would have left, honestly. <laughs> but um, it was nice to get a comfortable win and not have to sweat things out. Yes. We're joined, as always, by the other DRF harness. It is Derek Givner. Derek, welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here. I scoped a little sick tonight, but like any good standard bread, I'm here. <laughs> And hey, unfortunately, Robert Reed Jr., you can check out his action right now. He is on the Grand River broadcast. He is unfortunately unable to join us here this evening. But hey, we have a good, competent replacement. It is John Rallis. John, welcome in to your first roundtable. Yeah, thanks for welcoming me back. Uh, thanks for welcoming me here on the roundtable. I'll try and uh, fill in some big shoes. Robert's, they're definitely big shoes to fill. And uh, Mike, you need to bring me a Nahu uh, Picks t-shirt when you come down to Breeders' Crown Weekend in Toronto, if you do come down. Yeah, we'll definitely get you some gear there. Well, racing fans, uh, we have got plenty of stakes action to discuss on this card. Uh, in particular, we're going to go through most of the major stakes races on this 15 race card that will start at 6.15 p.m. And uh, then, of course, we will discuss the big two races. Races 13 and 14 will come up as the Pacing Derby as well as the Trotting Classic on this card. We'll also give out some late pick four tickets. We have a guaranteed pool there to discuss, so there's a lot to get to. So we will jump right into it, and we will get to race number two first. Race two is the Madison County. It's for the two-year-old Colt and Gelding Trotters. And, uh, oh, I don't know. Everyone needs to hear their Ray Catolo for the evening. So, Ray, why don't you start us off? Race two, Madison County. Who do we like? Oh, yes. Yeah. Start me off with uh, one of the races that could be incredible chalk, depending on whether or not this six is able to replicate the mile that he put in that uh, Indiana Sire Stakes leg last out. Uh, now he gets Dexter Dunn off a 19 to one upset where he went coast to coast. I feel like this horse is prop. I feel like this horse might go off the favorite versus the one, which at that point makes me wonder if Tech Song Soprano might be value on the board at that point. Because if if the one isn't the favorite, that would probably be the route I go. It seems like it's a two horse race just on paper, but the other thing with these two year olds is. It takes like it takes two weeks, maybe more sometimes for them to throw in a mile you would never expect of them because they're always developing as they go. So maybe give some maybe give some of these lines less credence. We have an idea of what some of these horses are maybe capable of. A lot of these horses maybe will show us something they've never shown us before. But based off of what's on paper right now, I think the one might be the play here. I'm not it, sure, though, why you think that the one's not going to be favored again when the horse has been favored five times in a row. Because and Dexter Dunn five, is driving one the six. To nine. I don't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I realize Dexter shows up on this horse. Did you watch the replay on, on, on the six? I mean, uh, tell, this, tell me this what horse was – he was excellent. I mean, the the uh, big favorite in that race loomed up, and, you know, this horse put that horse away and kicked away, kicked 27-1, and one, controlled that race. I feel like this horse is getting better. If you look at his last three starts – and yeah, you get Dexter done, but I think that that just means that they're all in in this race. I mean, they're they're going for a hundred. This is probably this horse's last start this year. 
Uh, you know, some of these other horses take considerable money, the one, the three, all the time. The four gets bet a lot. I think that those horses will be bet again. This horse will be bet. You certainly won't get 20 to one anymore, but you're going to get, I would say, three, four to one. And I think that he's worth three, four to one in the race. I have a hard time seeing Dexter hop on that horse and it not being the favorite mm-hmm. in all honesty, especially since that horse went 54 and two. That's we'll the see. best mile on paper. It's worth noting that the long had a choice of the two horses and ended up on the one versus the six. Uh, I don't know that that, you know, changes my mind any, because I still like the six a little bit better. I just think the six is starting to get good at the right time. You know, he seems to be coming into a, into his own. And I, I think this is his race to lose, but I don't see this as a, as race at a two horse race or anything. I see this pretty wide open with a number of, of these two year olds that could step up. Yeah. I like the six too. Um, I just, I just think he's going to control it. I think if, De- if somebody wants to go uh, from the outside, I think Dexter will let him go and just retake. And uh, I, I just see the six controlling the race probably in may- maybe two to one, Mike. I don't know about three or four to one. Two to John, one could be this race? Yeah, I say the same thing. I think the six is going to be controlling it. I, I do think that Jailhouse Dance did, uh, did go a big mile last time. Too. I mean, he was first up as the one to two favorite against uh, him last time. So I do definitely think that he can he can put forth a good effort. He's got a pretty nice closing kick. I haven't really liked Tech Song Sopranos last couple of races, despite going uh, first over in both of them. There was a couple of breakers in each of those starts. I think he could have gotten beaten one of them uh, potentially, but uh, I'm not really a big fan of him, even though he dra- draws the rail. I do think Dexter's going to control it, like many of you agree. Uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt to pick up Dexter Dunn. DeLong's driven Tech Song Soprano, I mean, many times. So I do feel like he's going to go with him based on notoriety and just loyalty on the fact that he's driven him the last three times. But uh, I do think Jailhouse, Jailhouse Dance can sit a trip, and I think he can go by uh, Talent Scout, who's definitely going to be put in play early. But I, I, I think that Jailhouse Dance is the one who can really shock here. I'll agree with you there, uh, John. That's the one I've got on top is the three Jailhouse Dance. You know, Morning Line says second choice. I think third choice, a little bit forgotten behind Dexter Dunn in that six, as well as the one from the rail. So I think we'll get a fair price there as we uh, – We'll go on and turn our attention next to the fourth race on this card. But before we do so, I'll try to do better this time than I did last time with reading our live viewer comments we have up there. So Kevin Plauta tuning in as always. Again, you can get his great analysis there on the NahuFix.com. He covers the Meadows out there for Mike and the team. And he says another spectacular six-pack on the round table. He's looking forward to all of our expert analysis. And, hey, Mike, he needs a Nahu picture, too. Come on, you could have brought him one on the PA side. Or everybody wants Nahu picture. I got to get, I gotta get an order in here. And we also have Nicole Knapp up there. Uh, lots of excellent analysis. Always a great listen. So, Nicole, Kevin, we thank you both for listening in. Uh, glad to see quite a few viewers tuning in right now here as we turn our attention to that fourth race. Kentuckiana Stallion management coming up. And, uh, by the way, I try to do a favor for really for myself, but also, I guess, for our listeners, hopefully. If you look there in parentheses, I've got the uh, two FT. So, these are two-year-old Philly trotters coming up in Kentuckiana Stallion mm. in the series. Derek Givner, start us off. What do we have in race four? Here's the I have an issue with this race and the, the two horses that I like best in this race, which are the four heart on fire and the 10 Kaylee S. I think they both have question marks to them. Uh, the four has a bit of a stale date, you know, hasn't raced in quite a few weeks, three weeks or a little bit more. And the 10 has to go from the second tier. And uh, I'm not a big fan of the second tier to begin with, but certainly with a two year old, I'm not a big fan of the second tier. And you know, uh, you can't have a better driver than Brian Sears in the bike, obviously, but they both come with question marks. And what do I do when the, the two horses I like best both have question marks and they're, it looks like five to two and three to one on the morning line, the first and second choice. It, it makes me want to look for something else. And, uh, and I just don't know what that something else is. I do. You want to know what I look for? Of course. I always want to know what you're looking for. <laughs> I, so I, I felt the same thing, especially if you watch that Peaceful Way final, even though Righteous Resolve is a talented horse, Hard on Fire did not really look like she had much in the tank. So there are a lot of question marks in that regard. I think help of the season just goes to the front and tries to go all the way. That that makes the most sense to me here. With Kaylee from the second tier, he's gonna she's going to probably hope that Miller pushes with the facement from post two, since that one tends to show some speed. And it maybe gets into the race, but more likely than not, judging off of Kaylee's line, she might try and just come off a trip. And that just leaves the seven who seems to be the best one off the gate from these outer posts to just go to the front, try and control things her own way, especially after just sitting back off that speedy mile last time. I have to imagine she has something in her tank. 
Speaking of which, that's a good chance for me to remind our listeners out there. Should have started with this. When we're at Harris Hoosier Park, uh, should note that there are nine on the gate. So there are some 11 horse fields we'll see uh, throughout the evening here. So post 10 and 11 then are going to actually be two starters in that second tier. So again, it's nine across the gate at Hoosiers Park. Uh, 10 and 11 will be second tier starters. And uh, I agree with you there, Ray. I, I think the face maybe shows a little bit of early speed. I thought that one might pick up a piece underneath. But I'm looking at Hartle Fire to rebound. You know what? I've lost enough money in this horse chasing at Mohawk recently. May as well go one more week here. And if there's something you love more than anything, it's losing money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how you can like the facement in the race. I mean, the horse has never left the pylons so far. Uh, you know, I mean, For I realize piece. that this this horse is, is cost, you know, is like supposed to be bred to be the second coming. But, uh, you know, I, I just the fact that they show up here is interesting to me. But that, that horse is really hasn't shown a whole lot. You know, especially two back. I mean, that, that race set up for you know something in that race and really didn't do anything at all. So I'm not crazy about the two whatsoever. And, you know, the 10, I think like everyone says, had a lot of question marks. I mean, the horse that this horse beat last time lost at Delaware today at what, one to five. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, you know, you get a bad post. Heart on fire was got absolutely nothing when six to five at Woodbine and then has missed a couple weeks. And that horse is going to get bet again off those lines. So, I do like the seven, the, the help of the season also, just because I that line last time, this horse sat the entire way when, you know, she finally found daylight. She bursted through and just missed. I mean, was coming three to their one there, that last, you know, 100 yards in the race, 50 yards in the race. I mean, she and the races before that, you know, she was put up front and basically was crushing fields as the favorite. I feel like that she's been pointed that like almost like that last race was a prep. This race looks like, you know, for they're going for 240, looks like the go all along, you know, and, and Ren can point a horse to a race. I, I like the way he does those sort of things. I really think this horse has a big chance and is probably the third or fourth choice. Well, Mike, to answer your question there on the face, I'm of the opinion that like the third place effort you mentioned two back uh, or rather look, look three back third there at a huge number, but you know, Instagram monogram fashion. I, I'm of the opinion that maybe that little bit of class edge with a better post here just kind of helps her along. You're right. I, I don't know if I use her on top, but underneath, I think she might be worth. A yeah. If, if you can get her like 30 or 40 to one in the super factor for those third or fourth spots, that's how you make those pay. And when Ray when and I agree on something like that, Mike, that really means something. Garnett, what do you, you have look, here? I just wanted to say, when you're looking at all these horses coming in, especially with the two-year-olds, who's your park in general? The track just plays a little bit different than some of the other tracks around the country. So it's worth noting that some horses, they look like they have form. They come in here. They don't handle the track quite as well. And some horses maybe that don't have great form will come in and love the track and race much better. Yeah, a lot of trainers will talk about how this one, they have to kind of like tinker with the shoes and thing. They have to get their horses equipped certain ways in order to get them to be able to get over the ground because sometimes it, they just don't travel the same way they do over the other surfaces. So watching for equipment too, especially with these two-year-olds, another thing to watch for as the day goes. Garnett? Yeah, I, I, I'm on the seven. I, she's done nothing wrong, really. I, I don't know why she was so far back last time, but... Um, you know, she's a local horse, loves the track. I find it interesting Graceful Patty shows up in this race, the nine. There, I, she may have been the most overbet horse of the year at Mohawk in, in a couple of these starts. For example, she was three to five last time in the, in the Grand Circuit race as a maiden. Like it, none of it ever makes sense with this horse. And, um, you know, it's kind of one for the they knew crowd. Somebody always knows when a horse is one of these, a horse like this is three to five when it wins. But when it finishes sixth, you never see any tweets about that kind of stuff, right? So, no, they don't know every race, right? Um, but for me, I'm on the seven. I just think uh, she's, she's done nothing wrong, and she's the, the horse with form. I just don't know what kind of a price you're going to get. I'm a little concerned about that. John? Yeah, I'm with uh, I'm with Garner and Mike. Uh, I think it's I think it's the seven, help of the season. It was just She's gotten faster every start being on the engine, and uh, I don't know. She took back last week and had, was loaded with trot late in the mile. I think uh, – Kaylee's got a tough post in post 10. I don't think the second tier is that bad at Hoosier Park, but I don't like it for two-year-old Philly Trotters. And I just haven't been impressed with Heart on Fire. I mean, the layoff and the last effort at the Grand Circuit event, the She's a Great Lady, i sorry, in the Peaceful Way final, just uh, wasn't really impressive to me. I really like help of the season. I, I believe for 240000 Peter Wren's going to point this Philly forward. And she's done nothing wrong. She's gone faster every start on the lead, and uh, I think she can she can beat these. It's worth noting when we say, why did she go to the back? They went 55-3 and three to the half. So chances are it was just a fast race, and that was probably the mo in the first but place. But she was never going forward in that race. She took yep. back from the very beginning. Like yeah, there was I mean, no intent to yep. leave whatsoever. Yeah, twenty-seven I mean, went, first quarter. Okay, but they went twenty-seven the race before, and she was leading. So yep. I don't, I don't. It's it was more of intent. What kind of odds does Graceful 
Grace will Patty go off in this race? That's a good I question. say sub ten to one again somehow. She will Probably. be that again. Yep. I pitched her last time. I mean, I didn't even use her at all. Same. Yeah, I didn't have her on my page at all. Oh, she was okay in the gym door. I have to imagine she's got some kind of quirks they're trying to work through right now. Just because the her her not being able to win an hours of one feels weird to me, especially for what she looked like in the peaceful way and on Hamiltonian Day. Something's up. Something's not really adding up. Right. One at Woodbine. It was terrible. Yeah. It was. One to nine. That's, that's why she was one to five. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like she's think she likes to... it on the lead at all. I think she has to come from off the pace, and I think she just needs to find a soft, soft enough field to win from off the pace. Maybe that'll pick up her confidence a bit. She didn't beat a horse last time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that was last of six. Ooh, what about the – watch uh, – another horse to look at, though. Watch the race on, on the one last time. This horse was basically on the right-hand rail uh, finishing up but came flying down the middle of the track. So – that's one that is a little bit interesting, I think, late. I mean, that's one that's sort of trying to figure it out, I think, a little bit. Let's look at our fourth race there. Again, that Kentucky and time management for the two-year-old Philly Trotters. Uh, we got a comment on Facebook. We'll take a look at it a little bit later on. Mark Anderson asked something about race 13. But, hey, also mentions uh, weather should not be a factor. Low 60s, light winds. So, admittedly, I should have looked it up myself. But that's good to know then. So, we're looking at uh, good conditions for this Friday evening card. And, again, Mark, we thank you. For tuning in and commenting with us, and uh, we will turn our attention next. Race five, the Phil Langley Memorial, three-year-old Colton Gelding Trotters. You know, it's a field of five, but I think it's an intriguing field of five. First and foremost, obviously, we're focusing on some of these big stars we'll get a chance to see on this Harris Hoosier card. And uh, one of them will be in this race, the five, Cool Papa Bell, our Hamiltonian champion at an upset 52-1 to one price. But will be swearing off against the two Panda Adventure? Maybe not the same class as Cool Papa Bell, but how about this horse? 10 for 10 this year, 8 for 10 last year as a freshman, 18 for 20 lifetime. John Rallis, field of five. Thoughts on this race? I, I'm not gonna go down. I'm not gonna go against the uh the hometown uh I mean the hometown favorite here, 10 for 10 this year. I really was interested to see how this horse could have finished off the mile last week, though, because Dover in motion was leading at the top of the stretch and then did break. So I really wanted to see what would have happened between those two um head to head. But uh I mean, he just trotted the lane really well. He's done no wrong this year. He looks really, really good, and I hope I can see him in Breeders' Crown action when they come over in Mohawk in October. 10 for 10, he's done no wrong. I have seen no reason why I can't, why I'm going against him here on Friday night. And the other thing that's interesting, too, is he always goes to the front. Cool Papa Bell always comes from the back, but if Cool Papa Bell's the best horse in the race, does Todd try to push this horse, even though this horse is broke twice, and it's both at the gate? There, there's no, some interesting tactics here. I think he tries to grind him down first over. That's what. I, that's mm -hmm. how I think the race is going to go, and uh, and I and I think he's going to do it. I, I, you know, I thought he was lucky in the Hamiltonian. I mean, if you watch that replay, I, I don't know how you could come to any other conclusion. But look at his race at Tioga. Yeah, that has to be a track record at Tioga for a three-year-old trotting colt, does it not? Fifty-one uh, and four. Gelding, I think it was, Gelding. and that was a race too. I thought Molotov cocktail held him off. Yeah, I mean that to me that that was really impressive. I'm 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 impressed with him now. I, I really wasn't after the Hamiltonian. I thought he just got lucky. You know what happens? It's racing. But uh, in this race here, I think he probably maybe he tries to leave third or fourth, and then he just sits first over and grinds down the Ponda Adventure and breaks his streak. That's the way I see it going. The thing about him though, too, I mean, yeah, he might have been lucky had that trip on the Hambo, but he was good enough to capitalize on it. I mean, right. he still had to to you know cut down those horses in the lane that were in front of him, like the Jovialities and the you know. Yeah, so, if, if he's not a horse, he pulls out and just doesn't go anywhere, right? Right. So, and then he's backed that up with, you know, the last couple of races that have been very, very good. So, I, I mean, he could be another one that's just getting good at the right time. He gets a short field here. I mean, he's danced every dance. This is, you know, it's just a matter of can he beat the, un, you know, the undefeated horse this year that's lived here and beat up on these Indiana Sire Steak horses all year long, whereas this horse is facing the best of the best out of town. Um, I think if he stays flat, he wins. That's just how it's been. Well, regardless of how this race ends, I think we have to give credit. I think he started to get some after the Hamiltonian, especially with two 50-to-1-plus winners that day. But I think a lot of credit's got to be given to Todd McCarthy, who's been driving phenomenally this year. And, uh, you know, I say it all the time. I've never driven a horse, so I, I try not to question driver's decisions. So, at the very least, I have confidence that Todd will have this one in the correct spot for him, regardless of however this race should shape up. But, uh, Derek, your thoughts on this race before we move on? I think you got to go with the handball winner here, Cool Papa Bell. I think uh, mostly because of the track size they're playing on here. It's a short field. Even though Panda Adventure is probably going to go to the front and control the action here, uh, I don't think Todd McCarthy really has to do much. You know, just pull on the backside, edge up slowly. And uh, I think 
his class will show. But you know what? Maybe Panda Adventures some sort of freak that you know we don't know about yet. I mean, I, I really couldn't fault anyone who wanted to take a shot against Cool Papa Bell, but I'll go Cool Papa Bell's way to beat him. Actually, before we turn the Patreon race to race, race five, you know what I got to ask? This, this is the Ray Catolo classic question. Ray, yeah, is better that means for race. me, or it's like a question yeah. I would ask. Okay, no, no, this, this is this is the Ray Catolo classic answer here. Answer question question for you for you to answer. Uh, Fifty cent trifecta straight. Ray Catolo loves those bets. So fine, you take your pick. Two five or five two. One three or four. Who's third? Oh, who's third? Hmm, that's a. I was thinking about this actually. I feel like, <laughs> unfortunately, this. This, when you have short fields like this, it might be like the best way to try and go about it would be second fave, first fave, third choice. Because Del Delgado doesn't really look like he'll be in a spot to suck along in the same way Swan Captain will be. And the winner take it all didn't really impress me that much at Freehold. So for value's sake, I, I would actually probably go like a $5 try Ponda Adventure to beat Cool Papa Bell with Swan Captain third, Colt. There you go. There's the Ray Catolo selection for race five as we will turn our attention to race seven. You know, we're kind of going to tell a similar tale here, I think, with uh, yeah. Fashion Schooner, our favorite, and the moneymaker, three-year-old Philly Trotter. So yet another star we'll see on this card. It's the 2022 Hamiltonian Oaks champion, the local hope. It will be the 4MM's dream, who comes off of eight consecutive wins to start this season, 14 for 16 lifetime, six for eight last year as a freshman. Similar type tail here, uh, Garnett, or how about Miss Walner Fashion? That's what maybe I like a little underneath. <clears throat> I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it is similar. I think uh, Fashion Schooner is probably going to be too fast and too classy for, for the local horse. But like Derek says, I mean, you can't really take fault somebody who takes a shot. You know, I mean, Eminem's dream might end up being two to one in this race, maybe. Um, but I, I just think Fashion Schooner is too good. She's beaten better than these, hasn't she? I mean, you, you could go to Miss Walner fashion. I don't really trust her. Um, but, you know, this is not a race I would particularly look to bet necessarily either. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe the other guys have a different, different opinion, but I, I don't see Fashion Schooner getting beat. Mike? I feel like these races are just more fun to watch than they are to bet, unless you have an opinion against the favorite. If, if you think that Eminem's dream is is like just like kind of like the last race. If, if you like the alternate to the favorite and you're getting your price, you're getting that eight to five, two to one that you want, then absolutely that's value. Take it. Um, if you if you're against a big favorite, this is the kind of race you want to isolate and run all your tickets through that horse that you like against the you know your fashion schooners of the world. If you're not interested in that one, that that's the kind of bets you want to make when you have these kind of races. I think because then you're going to get a little bit of separation and you're going to make those multis probably pay two, three, four times more than they should because a lot of people are just saying, okay, fashion schooner, we're just going to move on. Or, you know, so if you, if you like Miss Walner fashion, who adds Lasix and really, you know, I, I don't know what happened in that New Jersey classic, you know, hundred thousand dollar race where she was two to five and really didn't do much. Uh, you know, that could be the one in here. Uh, that could be the interesting horse in the race because I feel like the, the, the two favorites could hook up, especially early. And then, you know, that leaves it for her, especially adding the Lasix. She's proven that, you know, she can fly down the lane before. I mean, if you watch that race on Hambo Day, the source came from absolutely nowhere to win. So she's capable. She might not be quite as good as the top two, but, you know, if the other two hook up, she gets a trip, she gets the Lasix, you know, she's going to be the third choice. And so, it, it, Derek, no. maybe this is the question for you. I always refer to these questions for you. So for races five and seven, just backtrack for a quick second. Honda Adventure versus Cool Papa Bell, Fashion Schooner versus Eminem's Dream. What are the odds here at post time based on those morning lines? Because they're probably not there, right? Uh, I say Cool Papa Bell is probably going to be three to five and Ponda Adventure maybe seven to five. Whereas I think Fashion Schooner is going to be one to five and Eminem's Dream is going to be like five to two. I don't see any way they're beating Fashion Schooner in this race. I mean, she's too fast. It's a short field. She can control the action. Uh, I don't see anyone hooking up or anything. I see the pace going however Fashion Schooner wants it and her winning uh, rather easily. Uh, and just pick your exacto, whether you like Miss Walnut Fashion underneath, Eminem's Dream underneath. Even just making a, your look doesn't look awful. Could possibly finish second in there. I, I think maybe the key might be to if you like Fashion Schooner, like I do, to not play Eminem's Dream second because that's going to be the lowest exact. 
and with the way the race might set up too, I feel like this is a race where Fashion Schooner gets to the lead. And with how Eminem's dream doesn't really get off the gate a lot of the time, whether that's a choice or not, it feels like she's going to have to come first over here. And so if you had those two hooking up, what makes sense is to try and potentially find who might be that horse that's going to be behind her. That she's might got be to come to calling her. eventually though, right? She has to come calling. I mean, mm-hmm. this horse hasn't lost this year and has lost like, you know, twice in her life. So mm-hmm. she's got to come eventually. She's not I think it really comes down to when. Happen. When does she come call? If she comes calling early in the mile, then Tietrich's going to yield. He's going to let her go, and he's going to wait to the stretch, and I think he's going to blow by, and it probably does come in 3-4. If she comes come calling at, at the half, let's say, Tietrich's not yielding, and perhaps she gets you know stuck out there and someone else comes in there second. I don't know. I mean, it's... You know, I mean, she's this horse is going good right now, but she's she's lost races before. She's never really shipped out of the Meadowlands. How do you how do you know how she's going to respond to that? You know, and you're you're looking at a one to five shot who has to leave home, has to go on the road to a horse that's been has won fourteen races at this racetrack. I mean, I think that there's a a, a mild chance that maybe she doesn't race as well as as she has been when she's at home. The only way I could see Fashion Schooner losing losing in that situation is if what Derek said. Four goes to the lead. Timmy yields and sits. But then the pace is so slow that it turns into a final quarter sprint because MM's dream has just about as sharp a final quarter sprint as Fashion Schooner does. I mean, she almost got picked off last. I mean, I realize it was Jiggy Jog chasing her. But, you know, those last few steps, Jiggy Jog was coming pretty hard against her. I mean, and she had the best of it the whole race. If Jiggy and Jog was in this race, though, off. Jiggy Jog would be a clear second choice and it no one would be, be talking about it. But I'm just dream. saying that, that there is a possibility that this, you know, this horse – you know, could lose. Well, I was trying to figure out, I'm still intrigued by that last race. Do you think this was a similar type story to maybe that Hambo Oaks elimination for Fashion Schooner? I'm not sure if she necessarily was tiring through the stretch or getting caught in the stretch as much as maybe she just, I don't know, didn't see that horse coming on the outside necessarily again. I'm not, I'm not convinced fully that that was the full effort out of that race. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. It's it's tough to tell. These are an, these are animals. At the end of the day, they respond how they respond, and for the most part, they might not even respond consistently. So, it's also a fifty and two mile. She was going twenty six and four in a final quarter. It's if that's she, what she had to give. She yeah. she had a fifty mile winner. She gave her fifty mile. I don't know what more you could have expected from her. A forty nine mile, maybe. <laughs> But well, we will turn our attention next. Let Johnny get in there. Oh, yeah, sorry, John. John, here's Dawson's race. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I just think, like, I share the same sentiment as many of you. It's fashion schooners. Fashion schooners just too uh, classy for this bunch. I kind of like what Ray said, though. I actually was going to say the same thing. I do think if M- Eminem's dream comes first up late in the mile, I do think that's the horse you want to pitch in the exacta because – I do think that there's a chance that she could tire out late. And I think there's a price that could come in underneath the uh, fashion, fashion schooner, all depending on when she decides to make her move in the mile. But I'm with Ray there. John, I one should... one tip for you. You're never allowed to say, I like what Ray says, or you'll be <laughs> disqualified from coming back. So just, just remember that going my, forward. My last note is I wish, I hope they figure out what bold and beautiful's deal is. Cause she has, she's a, she has some interesting talents that they cannot harness for some reason. Just yet. Honestly, I might think about using her in the exotics cause she, the one she's for 18 got some, horse. She's got some. I was away the one day she won at Lexington and paid a hundred bucks. I am still furious about that. I missed that. I've been on this horse since she was a two year old, but let's keep going. Ray, Ray, you can't find horses as yearlings or two year olds to fall in love with them and continue to bet them. It's just a bad investment. Going <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least mine would be a $2 bet and not a $200,000 investment like you were thinking. Wise uh, guy. I will go 3-1 for my exact year this race. I will take Miss Walter Fashion underneath there in that second spot. As, uh, we'll go on and turn our attentions to race 10. Race 10, Kentucky Stallion Management, two-year-old Philly Pacers. And uh, field of 10 here. And as we do so, Ray, uh, I will throw to you first to answer a question semi-not related to this race that I guess I really should have started with at some point. Yeah. We get our great horsey explanations from you. So let's get another horsey explanation for you. Hoosier Park. Seven eighths mile tracks. So they will go around just over one lap, passing lane through the stretch. One of the longest stretches in the country. Give us a little track dynamics from the Ray Catola mines. All right. So oh, uh, tra- I'm going to draw with you here. So Hoosier is – so he, let's say that this is the finish line right here. All right. So Hoosier is shaped like a – Derek, I'm drawing. I'm not conducting a symphony. Please follow with me here. So it's seven-eighths of a mile, but they don't start at the finish line. 
That's because the track isn't a full mile in diameter or in circumference. And so that means they have to start an eighth of a mile earlier, which benefits horses that want to show speed to the outside. It, it makes it so it's a scramble to that first turn. And then they go around the whole way, almost like a mile track. That's it. That's the end of that story. I don't know where Ed's gone. So this is my show now. Welcome to my show. I'm the host, Mai. I'm supposed to be in charge, not you. My name is Mai, and it's called My Show, okay? The name is in the title. Mike, this is uh, race 10, the $200,000 Kentucky Anna Stallion Management. We just informed everyone what a 7 8 mile track is. It's like a mile, but just it hasn't grown into shape just yet. But that's okay. We'll take it for how it is. Two-year-old pacing Phillies, field of 10 going postward here. An interesting morning line favorite here in Earth, Wind, and Fire. Second, the twin B Joe Fresh there in the New York Tire Stakes final. I just, I found this race extremely difficult. I think it's the most difficult of any of these races that we're talking about. And because these Indiana Sire horses really have been taking turns beating each other. And some of them try to, you know, run at wrong times in the miles and, and I just feel like that it's, you know, one of those races where you want to take the strangers in the race. I, I landed on the one. Uh, hello. Yes. Hi. This is Burke. Uh, Chris Page has been driving most of Burke's horses now all of a sudden, especially in, in a lot of these bigger races. So, you know, if you toss out that PSI stakes final where this horse had the eight hole and essentially had no chance whatsoever, even though the horse was under 10 to one. If you look back at the, the prior PSI stakes races, this horse was racing extremely well. Had that 51 and four mile at Philly on August 25th. You get an inside draw. Uh, this horse is extremely well bred. I think that with some of these other ones in here lacking, you know, some other class, uh, I, I think that that horse is a definite use. Uh, there's some others I like. The outside two, I think, are are interesting. The never tell me the odds. I mean, this horse is, is a stallion series horse, but is in form. I mean, five times race, five times in the exacta. Chris Beaver horses are always live in these big races. It's an outside post. I feel like this horse is going to get ignored. You get Aaron in the bike, you know he's going to get that horse away early. So I like that horse. And then the 10 Vivian's Dream, I think, is obvious. Uh, I, I do like, though, that Vernon Downs race on August 27th. You know, that horse kicked 27 and a 50 and four mile. I think this horse, a big track, definitely suits her. Gets the second tier. Uh, should be able to work out a trip. So I was one nine ten in that race, but I do think there's a lot of different ways you can go. I got a question about the one. Uh, I got circled here. Did, did, did in my pro in my program at least does it indicate that she bled in her last race? Yeah, it, and yeah. she's not on Lasix. But she's not yeah. getting Lasix. That's uh, a little bizarre to me. Yeah, I was wondering that. I myself. just tossed that race completely. That's that's just how I looked at it. So if, if you in thoroughbreds, if they bleed, are they not forced to be on Lasix in their next start? I think. I'm not sure that that's true. We're we're a har we're a harness man, but if uh, the thoroughbred crowd you, is out there, this one that's where's that when we need them? That that indication means blood. I, I can't means, imagine I what else it, it could mean. I think it might mean blocked. Really? Yeah. Oh, See, I thought it was right. blood too, but I wasn't. I wasn't certain. That's and possible. It's not in, it, it's that, in that's that one changed program, though the over one. the years. Who I feel who? like that used to mean blood. I haven't trotted a race in 15 years, so it's hard for me to remember. But who charts here is fully? Anybody know? I'm sure somebody knows this, so I'm sure someone will. We should know anyway, it, apparently. I'll touch that's on who I like because I I actually really like Vivian's dream in this spot. I, I think that if you go back and, and watch those Sire Stakes finals that day. You know, a lot of the horses on the card that really figured just didn't show up. Uh, there was a 24-hour detention barn. And I think a lot of these horses just <laughs> didn't care for it, you know, and, and maybe to hurt them. There's still Imagine a detention barn here, but there's only a 12-hour detention barn here. And I think there's a huge difference between staying overnight in a place you're not used to, just like anyone who goes on a trip can say, staying in a hotel room, staying in a place you're not used to, and then just showing up at noon and racing at, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, I think the detention barn played havoc with some of these horses. I think there were some crazy results in the New York Sire Stakes at Tioga. And, and I, I thought this horse was a monster going in. And I, I don't know why she didn't show up, but I, I expect that she's going to show up here. I don't love the second tier, but I think we'll get a reasonable price because she didn't show up last time. See, I like the second tier for her because I'm almost certain one of the reasons why she lost that race was she went to the lead. 
her best miles have been when she's sure she's won on the lead at Batavia Yonkers half mile track, but even at Yonkers on a half mile track, she gave way late. And then she sat a pocket trip there at Vernon Downs to go the fastest mile of her life. And on top of that, in that New York Star Six final, who does she go to lead in front of? Only like one of the fastest two-year-olds in the country right now. I That was a real weird drive to me by Jordan and my mic. Also, I bet the horse in that race. I felt the same thing. So I, I think she's probably going to be better from this second tier spot with a target. That said, I don't know what kind of price you're going to get. I'm kind of jaded to take her after that kind of effort. I was kind of interested in the seven off of those two Indiana Sire Stakes lines, and she seems like one that she might fire out and be able to kind of trip out late. Uh, but also, Hochstetler's horse, the five, that one was that one was sticking out to me at twenty to one on the morning line. Uh, went went towards the front last time after missing two weeks in between Sire Stakes legs. Was involved in a hot pace, didn't really finish the race, but it was one of those races where it seemed like she sneakily got better. And if they don't, if she isn't inside of that kind of pace scenario early and she's able to use her move more efficiently i feel like a, i feel like a long shot she might be able to get into the mix late okay well not not none of you have mentioned the horse i like so i'm going to jump in well, that's because she's going to lose but go for it well maybe uh <laughs> i'm going to swing for the fences with the six my hungry girl yannick got on her two starts back immediately put her into play where she never really was uh, involved early in a race prior to that got her a trip and won and then last time in the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes final, the race was just too fast, 50 flat, right? So I think, you know, there's a chance this horse could get a similar trip as she did two starts back. And if she's 15 to one, I'm going to bet her. Yeah, okay. I really liked her first effort when she was at Philadelphia, Chester, actually. I think it was a non-winners of one against older horses. And I just couldn't believe where she actually won from, uh, from where she won from. And I just haven't really seen much from her lately, to be honest with you, to really like her in the spot. All righty. Well, I, I have. Keep like going. Queen, Who do you I like? I do like then? Queen's Reign, though. I do like Queen's Reign. I do think that horse. I do think that Philly can sit a trip and win. She's been improving the last two starts, so I. I think that she could sit a trip again and uh, and go by them late. Man, this John guy really knows what he's talking about. Is Who brought him on? That she's had perfect trips in two races in a row. I mean, that's well, that's one thing I wasn't crazy about. I wouldn't say two back. She was in the fourth uh, leg of the Indiana Sire series. Uh, I, like, I wouldn't say that she had an absolute perfect trip. I mean, she got shuffled to fourth or fifth and then came right up the rail. She's supposed to have pace. I get it. But it's still tough to, to rally from the inside um, and pass horses coming from the outside at Hoosier. So she was really impressive to me, two back. Uh, and then she came back and repeated as a shorter price. I believe she was two to one. And she did convert off a pocket trip. But listen, speed is one of her assets. She was chasing uh, Hungry for Love down at... Uh, at Lexington, and uh, I think she's going to be sitting another trip, and I think do think that she's quick enough to go by these late. Yeah, it's it, like it seems like she, even though she's gotten perfect trips, like John said, with her speed, there's a reason she's gotten those perfect trips. It's because she puts herself in that spot. And so if she gets another perfect trip, why not make money off of it? Yep. All right, well, I have returned. We have well established. Where'd you all go? Knew, you all knew I was going to go get food downstairs. You know, it's perfect timing for, me for, for two minutes to leave Ray in charge and just let Ray run with, with what a track is. So that's fantastic. Uh, my last thoughts here on race 10. I like the one here. Hello, yes, hi. Post date last time on Pennsylvania Sire Stakes. Bled in the race. Garnett, uh, Terry Long is a charter at Terrace, Philadelphia, former charter at Rosecroft. BL is bled. If it is blocked or boxed in, it is two brackets, one singular bracket. Is second tier. The double brackets is boxed in. See, look at that. I even listened to the show while I was uh, out. So the horse bled is not going on Lasix, and you like the horse? She's so a toss, is, complete man. toss for me then. So I will hopefully we will rebound here. You're right. I uh, wouldn't wouldn't mind seeing some Lasix in there or something to try to change it around. But uh, trainer Ron Burke, you know, so definitely high percentage barn there. So we'll trust that uh, whatever it is, maybe he somehow got it sorted out. So I, I will toss that one in. And also like the ten a bit Vivian's dream as well there as our. Uh, one of my favorite six for eight tier has to work out the trip from that second tier though. So one ten for me. Race ten as we turn to race eleven. Less than and Ed, I'll, I have to yeah. say, um, yeah. you didn't have to, but thanks for also getting food for me. <laughs> I, I, it just came in some beef jerky. I'm gonna enjoy it uh, that, that, with every bite. That too. Not only did I, not only did I continue to watch the show while I was gone. Not only did I leave you with a good rant to take us for a while while I was gone. I didn't even. I'm not even sitting here eating the food either. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna march on and i will eat after we are done here so race 11 well, it's a gift so i don't want it to go to waste i forgot to mention hoosier is a passing lane though in my rant there's a yeah, passing say, lane in the eighth say, yeah. yeah in the final eighth of a mile so yeah so that is something kind of important to note though so you know when you watch a hoosier park race back just watching a couple here this evening you know you'll see that obviously coming midway through the stretch there you know you're, you're still locked in behind the leader but once that passing lane comes you still have a good amount of stretch left i mean again i think 
I think this is a correct statement to say. I think it is the longest stretch in North America. Is that correct? I think so. and Hawthorne. Okay. So we Hawthorne win. is the longest. Very it has long the same stretch. kind of passing lane Balmoral used to rest in peace. Um, to race 11, though, the Jenna's Beach Boy, it's three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers, going for $140,000. And, oh, John, let's go with you first here. Field of nine, what do we have? I'm, g- I'm just going to go with the morning line favorite soaring now. This Colt, when he sees clear racetrack, he is just so damn fast. Uh, I mean, he got beat by Rip Wheeler uh, two back, but he was following a 70 to one shot off that cover. Rip Wheeler didn't even pull uh, Brandon Bates, and then he ended up pulling out late, and he actually got the jump on him just because um, Joy Putnam was following that cover. And I just think that he's just a lot faster than these. I'm hoping that Mad Max Hanover gets played just because of who he's raced against his last start. At medals was was not good. I mean, he was a three to five favorite. He was just terrible. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, early actions, winless on the year. I'm gonna go with the local horse again. Soaring now is just really, really fast. I do think that there's gonna be pace to chase, and I think that when he sees that racetrack, he's just gonna fly. On top of that, if you watch him in the Milstein, even though he was third by seven by against by the missile in that world record, mile, he went a massive race. That horse had a lot, and Joey, Joey had the option to send him off the gate, but he decided to try and stick back instead. And that entire race, he was it was almost like he was regretting that decision. He was trying to put that horse into the race, was yanking it, pushing it, yanking it, pushing yep. it, and the horse just kept going to get yep. third there. Uh, that's I, I I'm in full agreement, even though this horse is probably going to be the favorite. And on top Mad Max, I'm curious how Mad Max is gonna bounce back off that race because that was not the Mad Max handover I, I remember seeing at the Meadowlands uh, for whatever reason. And early early action might be sneakily better though this time around. He's always been better chasing a horse. He was on the lead at Lexington. Maybe we see him show up for some of the exotics, but uh, this is like Soaring Now's lines look good. They look even better if you watch that Milstein. Absolutely, yeah. Anyone else? I agree for me. I like I like Soaring Now, but a horse that I think is has some upside is the six late in Hanover, especially if you look at his last two starts. I mean – that race in that PA Sire Stakes final, he took the absolute worst of it. Uh, he basically set it up for Forever Boy in that race. Ended up, that was a fast race, too, on the day. They went 49-1 and one in that race. This horse raced extremely well. Then came back and ran into Birthday, who's a horse that I also liked that day, and ended up winning back at the Meadows at, you know, the, that next week in the Keystone Classic. So this horse isn't going to take much money, I don't think, especially off those couple lines. But he's he's sneaky. He's racing well, and I'm not sure he can beat some of the better ones, but he's definitely in play for underneath, I think, for sure. Garnett? I don't have a strong opinion on this race, but I'm tending to lean to early action, maybe for a bit of a price. I think he's uh, I think he's improving. I like his race in the Empire Breeders Classic. He was good last year, obviously. We know this horse from last year. Winless on the year, but I, I think maybe he's coming around, and, and maybe this field's kind of within his range, and you know, you get around a five to one price here. I, I'm willing to take a little stab on him, but like I said, I, I don't really love anything in this race. Me either, really. Uh, the two I have circled Mad Max Hanover early action, try to get around soaring now, but I'm with you, Garnett. Nothing I really particularly you just love. just love soaring now. You're, Derek, you're entirely allowed to love him. Derek? I like, I like Mad Max Hanover here. Uh, I think if you look at his best performances, look at the hemp. He was awful. He came back with a big performance in the PA Sire Stakes, and he was awful again. I think his best place is on the lead. I don't think he's a good start and stop kind of horse. I think you need to just send him and let him go. And I think this is a spot where you could send him and let him go on, on this type of track. I think he's a little bit better on the bigger track, in my opinion. And uh, I like him in this spot. And I think you get a reasonable price because of the fact that he's coming off such a bad line. Uh, I also think Frozen Hanover is interesting. First start on Lasix was pretty good. You know, couldn't stay with Beach Glass. But you know what? Which of these horses could stay with Beach Glass? So uh, I think he's an interesting horse coming in for Blaze. All right, well, let's look there. Race 11, Jenna's Beach Boy, 3 Colton Gelling Pacers. And with that, we'll get into some of the good races here. As we get to that pick four sequence again, and we'll be races 12 through 15. We'll give out some uh, pick four tickets here at the end of the show. But uh, first things first, returning back to some Facebook and Twitter, YouTube comments. Uh, Kevin Plouch is back in there saying Ray needs a telestrator. I guess that was what Ray was explaining to us what a track is. People oh, hello. Right. The room. You know, Kevin, he really did. I very conveniently had it just perfectly planned to get, uh, you know, food rate as that happened. That's the last thing Ray needs. We'll move on to the next comment. <laughs> Ray needs a mute button because he always eats every every time yes. we do something like this. Always. <laughs> Everyone's told me I'm like the Steve Kornacki of harness racing. Nobody's I've, ever said that. Uh, I a lot. Everyone's been saying it. You might not have been around everyone. I was around everyone the other day. I think Kornacki <laughs> could eat on air more, honestly. 
Uh, Doug Martin on Facebook uh, likes your thinking, GB. That is related to your thoughts there on race 10. So welcome, Doug, to the conversation. Thank you for watching tonight. And Mark Anderson, uh, the rest in peace to Illinois Racing. Uh, that was on the Ray Catolo comment over about more. So sad. And Illinois. All right, race 12, start of this late pick four. It is the elevation. Giro Colt and Geldings on the pace purse of 110,000. One thing I love about Harris Hoosier Park is they always, in the bottom right-hand corner of these program pages, give us the off time, and it's usually pretty darn accurate. So for those that, uh, uh, for some weird reason, wouldn't want to tune into the rest of this card, because you totally should, but for what it's worth, this late pick four sequence, estimated off time of 10, 10 p.m. So it's about the time you'll be looking for this. Late pick four, race 12, elevation. Again, zero Colt and Gelding Pacers. Derek, what do we have? I think Coach Stefanos is the horse to beat. Uh, I don't think the, his last effort was great, but he's adding Lasix, so I think that will probably take care of whatever was ailing him. That being said, I like a different horse in this race. You know, I, I've been going with a lot of favorites. This is a race where I actually like a price, and the price is number five, Irvin Hanover. I think this is a, a good horse that hasn't uh, – maybe put it all together yet. I think if you look at that PA Cyrus 6 final, you know, which people are going to look at that line and say, wow, this is disgusting. And this is actually going to make Garnett's pick in race 10, my hungry girl, look even better. Ron Burke that weekend in the, of the Pennsylvania Cyrus 6 final had eight horses in and not one of them hit the top three. Wow. <laughs> not one. That must and be that the lead, first time for that. That leads me to believe that there must have been some barn sickness going around. You know, because it's just such an anomaly that he would start eight in the final and none of them even finished in the top three. I'm thinking this horse was sick. I think his prior effort was good. I've seen efforts from this horse, you know, four back that were really good. And uh, I think this horse is the real deal and he just hasn't put it all together yet. And he could be, you know, really show up with a big effort and people aren't expecting it. Mike? Well, I mean, I, I could understand that. I mean, I think that strangers in, in some of these races are, you know, very plausible, especially with a lot of these, you know, you're getting a lot of these Indiana Sire Stakes horses in a lot of these races that have been racing against each other. And we know who's the best of those against, you know, each other, I think. But some of these strangers coming in here, uh, you know, we're, we're not quite sure how they match up. And we're going to we're going to find out. I, I feel like that this, you know, race is a terrible morning line favorite. The the eights uh eight three to one here and really hasn't finished a race has basically had trips and and has really no excuses in a lot of those indiana sire stakes races but he's gonna go the front again uh i like to force on uh frankie frankie had a interesting trip last really didn't get out until extremely late and then had to fly around there was like seven across the racetrack in that race and and kicked 26 and three to win uh, from a really, really tough spot. Now you get a little bit better post. I would think the horse is going to be a little bit closer early. So I, I like that horse as opposed to a lot of the other Indiana horses. I think the seven's interesting. Can't stop Lou for a price. Uh, you know, if you look at that last trip, th this horse got out away from the gate early down at Lexington and then ended up shuffled and, and really had no chance whatsoever. Uh, you know, came down the middle of the racetrack. I think combustion was like two to five in that race. And that horse has been winning at Lexington. Nancy Tactor, Dexter Dunn, 15 to one morning line. Uh, Going to take money, I would think. But this horse has shown some ability. And again, another stranger shows up into Indiana. They're here for a reason. So I was uh, four, seven, mostly in this race. Well, Mike, I, I disagree with you. And you, you said the AJB Graham. I think he might be a bad favorite, right? Bad horse. But I don't know if it's a bad morning line. I mean, he's three to one line. And look at three starts back. He's one to twenty. They still bet him at three to five. He's still four to five. He still loses all three races. So what's to say he doesn't continue to take some money in yeah. this race? He could take money, but I just I don't like he that. Had favorite that. versus morning line, but I don't think it's a bad morning line. Uh, Ed, you threw me off there. I thought you were going to say he was a bad morning line favorite. I would say you're right because he's a morning line second, second choice. choice. Okay, thank you all. Thanks everybody for the the morning line police <laughs> can bite me. <laughs> By the way, I ask this, yeah, I I ask this every time we do a new track, and I should know the answer to this. Maybe I can get an answer from this very quickly if I text uh, someone here we know. But uh, who's your part? Do we know computer morning line or someone doesn't? Excellent question. I will work on getting an answer to that while they're making the spots in this race. I know for certain well, that with the stakes, the stakes races that uh, Rick Moore does the morning line. I'm okay. pretty sure that Rick Moore does it because I've seen him on the, you know, the broadcast when they're doing the draw, you know, doing it. So – I don't know if he does it for every race, but I'm pretty sure he does it for the stakes. 
All right. Well, let's see if we can get an answer officially. Uh, Garnett is uh, thoughts on race well. First of all, Morning Line Police is a great name for a horse. It's only 17 <laughs> characters. So with two spaces, I think you get 20 characters now, right? Somebody's got to huh. name a horse Morning Line. It's still 18, isn't it? Yeah, it's still I 18. Think so that, was, I think it's still 18. So then you got to string it all together, but somebody's got to use that name. Listen, this, this to me um, is handicapping 101 this race. If you look at the first quarters of every horse in this race, this one and two horse leave every race. They're going when the gate opens. They're not going to be anywhere at the finish but they're going to totally destroy the chances of the five, seven, and eight in the process. This race comes down to the three or the four horse. They're the only two I'm going to use what? In, in this pick four. They're the two, Ooh. they're the two horses that have been coming late. Huh? And if I can get 25 to $30 on the exactor, I'm going to hammer the exactor bucks. That's How are you talking about closer? Uh, Melissa Essig has two horses. One's a speed to the outside that DeLong sticks with. And then Tietrick picks up the closer. Where? On the six, strength from above. Yeah, the, well, and the, and the, the six will be closing for four, for fifth, and you're going to be crying because you had him for fourth in your super, right? <laughs> no, because I'm going to have him for first because well, I think the horse can win. Well, well yeah, it is. Of him. course you do. Well, so I'm that's gonna... that's the way I see it. I think there's going. I think it's going to be a really fast opening quarter. It's going to be a fast half, and the pace is going to collapse at the top. Gar of the Garnsdale, no. clearly, you don't believe. It when I say it. So, John, please explain to Garnsdale why the six is winning this race. <laughs> I don't like the six. It's the nine. Yeah. I, like. I do like the nine in this race. The nine is really, really fast. I The, the nine actually beat Coach Stefano's fair and square. Where is it? Uh, a few back. And uh, you know what? This horse actually has should have won on July 28th. It was actually coming by and actually broke. It was going to go by, by them all. Late. And I really do think this horse's last two lines. I'm going to throw those out because he adds Lasix for the first time now. And I, I'm not really a fan of Frankie Frankie because he did no racing. He's just stayed on the rail. He angled out, and he beat a couple, and he beat a bunch of tired horses late in the mile. But I do think it's coach, between Coach Stefanos. But I do like John DeLong on the outside. I do really like Buzzsaw Russ to get it done. What so if I, the four was named John John? Would you like him? I'd, I'd have to like him, yeah. <laughs> so what kind Ray of trip does the nine get? Do you think that the nine gets the front here? No, I think he just floats out, and I think he's going to go by them late. I think there's, I, I really do think that there's a chance that he's going to upset here. He's really fast. I mean, I can see the nine too, but I, I gave you the layup, John, there on the six because we it was it was entirely a dunk on Garnsdale there. No, I, I couldn't finish off that alley oop. <laughs> well, clearly we have some very differing opinions here on race twelve. Uh, Mike, Wait, you I'm like with, something? I'm Mike. I'm with one you mentioned there. The seven can't stop Lou. Uh, you know, and I'm not even sure if I agree with Garnett that he, you know, saying that his chances are hurt because he can't get to the lead. I mean, he's raced perfectly fine off the lead. You know. Look at some of those uh, races down at Oak Road this summer. So I, I think he can totally come from off the pace if he has to. So I like that one. Uh, throw in Coach Stefanos as well. And uh, before we turn the page on race 12, if there's not any last thoughts. I've I'll said lie. my piece. All right. I did get a response for us. So it is Rick Moore for the Pacing Derby and the Trotting Classic. The rest is Computer Morning Lines. There you okay. go. Okay. All righty. Well. We'll turn to race 13. Hey, we'll turn back to a comment from Facebook there. Mark Anderson said a while back, is the field in race 13 the best field we have seen this year? And I will start by answering that with saying, I don't think it is with the current moment it is, but uh, the Harris Hoosier Park pacing derby, race 13, free for all pace. I think if everyone was still healthy and they weren't this deep in the season, it would be a very deep field. As is, we're going to see, of course, the fast Santa Bread and History Bulldog Hanover. We'll see him finally get a matchup with Ali Wag Hanover, who obviously there was some issues with stakes payments. Maybe Derek has a little more insight on that. I know Derek Harness covered this a little bit. Um, and, you know, I think with horses like a buck about Hanover in there, Rocky Road Hanover, I think in theory that makes it a very, very strong field. But at this point in the season, there's a reason they're 15 and 20 to 1. I think chasing as much as they have this summer of Bulldog and just some of those miles have really, really started to catch up to them. Catch the fire. You're pretty clear third choice here, maybe a little bit one of the – the fresher ones here with only those seven starts this year. So I still think it's a fantastic field, but again, it, it is wear and tear of the season. I think it's starting to show on some of these. He's the second choice. Catch the fire. Um, oh, Alley right, Wag is the third the choice on the morning line. again. Okay, I'm, 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 trying to be to post time. <laughs> I'm just trying to be clear. Did they leave? Did they leave show betting and place betting on for this race? I don't see anything in the program. That... Um, nope. I think they'll take it. Wow, that's wild. How much? How much of your son's? Uh, Post grad college fund? Are you putting on Bulldog to show? He's on his own. He's he's making a salary now. I oh think wow! I, he he doesn't get any post grad anything from me except free board. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good for those Aussies. 
they they've had Joe Benning on Bulldog the whole way through Woodbine, right? I think. Yeah, the other starters. Well, yeah, I think he's been to there. me. A show bet on Bulldog looks pretty good. I mean, <laughs> it seems like a right? guaranteed ten five, cents. Five percent in, right. in a minute. And 40 is. The way I look at it is, at this point, if you are betting against Bulldog Hanover, you're just stubborn, you know, because th- there's no logical reason you could tell me why some other horse in this race is going to beat Bulldog Hanover. There just you- isn't one. How do you beat him? I mean, he gets a, if he gets one a twenty eight quarter, the race is over. And you know, Dexter, Dexter kind of just rolls up in twenty eight to take the lead in the second quarter, and then here comes the two twenty six and ones. How does anybody ever beat this horse? I'm I'm at that point now. I tried to beat him. I, I just don't. I just I can't even fathom it happening at this point. The only so- horse I give even a slight chance would be Catch the Fire and. The horse has a race in seven weeks. How could he be sharp enough to beat Bulldog Hanover? Well, at yeah. the very least, he has the qualifier. Bulldog oh, has wow. a race since the third. <laughs> 49 3 qualifier at Scioto is not nothing. So not what do you what do you think of his last two races though at Mohawk? I mean, I realized that the elimination, they you know, kind of took him back, really didn't race him. But it, it seemed like tattoo artist had, was closer to him than anything else had been for quite a while. I think he and, pulled the plug too, if I remember right, on Bulldog. You know, and now you get catch the fire. I realize the horse hasn't raced, but you know, he was racing extremely well. I mean, look at that Meadowlands race. I realize it's not the same, the same thing, but he went 46 and four there. He likes this racetrack. He's won this, you know, these big races here at this racetrack before he's probably going to get a trip behind him. Cause I don't see bulldog sitting in this race. I would imagine he's going to go. So he's going to be on his back. If anybody's going to have a chance to beat him at this racetrack with that stretch, it's, I mean, this, I feel like if you're going to take a shot, I realize that, you know, this horse looks unbeatable, but I mean, we're here to, to play devil's advocate and talk to, about other horses in the race. And I feel like that this could be the setup at this racetrack that, you know, maybe gets this horse, you know, he's going to lose eventually. What's not to like though? I mean, if you look at this, you were saying about his Canadian form, you look two starts back. I think he won a race that I didn't think he could win, quite frankly, from the really? spot he was in. So you and thought he the, could lose that race, but not this race? And looking at his last start, I mean, the guy just set a kidney, the, the guy, the horse set a Canadian <laughs> record, 46 and four. How much faster did he want the horse? And, to and, it's, and, what and, I'm saying is, is that he, the, you know, at the Meadowlands, he was blowing out those races, two, three, four lengths. And it, it did look in the stretch like tattoo artists had a chance in that race. And that's the first time in a while that anybody's looked like they've even had a chance against this horse is what I'm saying. I'm with so, Mike. And they, they were supposed to go to Scioto. They skipped. And ended up here. So well, I think I mean, it's skipped because there was no reason to go. Why are you why are you gonna burn the horse out? You know you're going to Hoosier, then you're going to Dayton, then you're going to the Red Mile, then that you're going to the That was their plan, not mine. That was their, what they no, decided. That was a me. tentative plan. Tentative plan. Well, he was, was going until going. they drew the race. I mean, you know, you, you got it, was, it could have also somewhere. just been a hundred thousand dollar check if he wanted it. I mean um no. Uh, now my statement is now, Mike. I think it's you and I that have discussed this in the pack. I mean, maybe people have different opinions on this, but I don't know how to describe it if no one else just sees it. Maybe I just think I saw something I didn't actually see, but I'm still of the opinion in that damn patch stakes. Look, he wins, but I just thought, especially like watching him, I think I had to clear to the half when he clears after the half. I just thought just a little while, he just didn't look super comfortable. I don't know if it was the track or what. Again, maybe I'm just making things up that I saw, but if you're trying to make the case in theory that he could lose here. I don't think he looks super 100% comfortable over this track on Dan Patch night. That, that's my five for five. And, and five still one over the Hoosier Park track. Five huh? and five. Yep. Perfect. He's yep. never lost on this track, Bulldog. Okay. No, His, and he did go home in 25 and three. His last mile, too, you guys got to understand, uh, was was late in the card. It was cool out. I was there. Um, and it and it equaled a re- it equaled a record that was set at – seven o'clock on a, on a night where it was sunny out and muggy right like he was in reality he was about a second faster but you know the time is the time but if, if you're going to put a, a variant on it in your mind that's what it was well with that's that it. in mind then i assume uh, is there any objections to us all singling are we all singling bulldog in this big four uh, i am uh, i'm using catch the fire and uh-huh. i'm singling catch the fire no there's the right to the tickets okay <laughs> I'm uh, play it, play it once. You beat Bulldog, you win. If not, then oh well, I'm out eight dollars. It's like I went to McDonald's and gave myself food poisoning. I'm gonna take a shot, and I mean, I'm not, I'm singling Bulldog Hanover. I don't think he loses, but I'm gonna take a shot and use Desperate Man in my exotics. 
And yeah, twenty to one morning line. I think it'd be a good price. I think this horse can grind them, grind out with the best of them, and I think he's good enough to get in there, which should be a pretty nice price. Yeah, he's, been, yeah. he's been really good lately too. I agree. I just wish he wasn't on the lead last time. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I have a Facebook comment there. Mark Anderson is saying he doesn't like betting the chalk, but he hopes Bulldog wins again. The sports needs another superstar, and this horse is scary good. I definitely agree with that. And speaking of which, Derek, you laid out for us this year, obviously, his plan to get himself to the uh, Breeders' Crown. Do you have any insight on long term what we're looking at for Bulldog? I, I haven't really asked him. I mean, oh, you know what? I did kind of ask him. And as usual, what you get kind of the non committal, I'd love to race the horse next year, you know, but, you know, we don't know. You know, that's. The kind of thing, because it's a money decision. I, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly think that they are going to, I honestly think they'll try to breed and race, but I really don't know. They signed the deal. I think they signed the deal with Diamond Creek, correct? If uh, yeah. Correct me oh. if I'm wrong with Diamond Creek. Uh, he's going to stand up in Canada, but Diamond Creek has a, you know, shares in him or, or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I Next hope he said, races. Yeah. We need superstars on the track, and he's a superstar. So I hope he continues to race at least one more year none of us even mentioned alley wagon this was the fastest horse in the sport last year yeah john jump in there you you were ready for alley wagon so bad list. i i didn't even, i forgot how bad the Sioto downs line was i honestly didn't even realize he raced then i was, so, I was looking forward to the showdown and then afterwards mike kind of put uh dampened my mood a little bit so uh yeah i really i didn't even realize he raced at Sarato downs and now yeah there's nobody who can be bulldog he would he was asked to do a little bit of work alleyway kind of last week at this time it's uh, a little bit of work and he just folded up uh, i hated the uh, do you think that philly it. mile took a lot out of him uh maybe it did you know maybe he'll come back strong and, and he'll race big here um uh, he's over to, i'm looking at his record here he hasn't started here in three years in 2020 he was over two I don't know. Uh, that was just a three I'll, I'll be playing against him. I won't be using him underneath. And if he beats me, he beats me. Hey, Derek, to back up a little bit here on Alleywag, um, I know DRF Harness had a story on this. So for Alleywag this year, we haven't seen a matchup, Alleywag and Bulldog. So what was a little bit of insight that you have with limited knowledge you have here on Alleywag stakes payments this year? The bottom line is uh, there were stakes payments that were made throughout the year. We make them in February, March, April, May, usually on the 15th of the month. All the stakes payments were made up through April. The stakes payments in May were not made. It was either a computer glitch or error or something went awry. How about that? Uh, as to what, I guess it depends on who you talk to. But something went awry in any stakes rates that had a payment in May. He didn't get paid. They didn't get paid. And that's why he wasn't in some of those races. Before we turn the page on this race, how about a Facebook comment from the track announcer at it? Harris, Philadelphia. It's Mike Bozich saying, and this is a bold statement, Bulldog goes down this week. He says, catch the fire. And uh, you know what? I Mike always knew I liked Mike. For track announcer reason. Harris, Philly. gives us some insight on that Philly race. Note that Alley Wag was under wraps and not ass in that race at Harris. So there we go. And, hey, by the way, Mike Bozich graciously, two Sundays ago, on his ever PA Sire Stakes finals, gave me a piece of this fantastic pizza that he had from near the Meadowlands. <laughs> I think if I recall correctly, I think it was Park Tavern somewhere on Route 17 or something, whatever it was was fantastic so. one more horse in that race too uh underneath this is the plan love yeah loves that racetrack love i mean he's, he's just and, been and so that good. race last time and and at Sayota was very very good uh you know this horse is you know he just finds a way he's made almost three million dollars so yeah he, he's been on a second coming of getting those checks underneath the fastest horse ever well race 14 hey that's the signature race we see it in the upper right hand corner there that's cedars caesar's trotting classic logo this is it it is the Caesars Trotting Classic. It's the free-for-all trot. Let's go to Ray Catola here first. Ray, how is this possible? A field of the 10 best trotters in the country and in North America. No Acura D. No Al Raja 1. There is no Aki Sponsted entrance in this race. That's that's why. From what, Maybe what didn't I make the stakes payments. I, I'm pretty sure they were eligible. Um, Al Raja's injured. Eckery was second in the Maple Leaf Trot, and from my understanding, in a couple of weeks, there is a particular race, uh, maybe down in Kentucky, that they might be really wanting to target with that one specifically, and maybe they don't want to give him a start after that second in the Maple Leaf Trot. I don't know. Uh, back of the neck off the... They, they, they've, they've been spacing the starts out for all of their stars uh, with big chunks of meat between when they go on the track. So maybe this just fell on the calendar where Ox said, I'm, I'm going to let someone else have it. 
Ekuri is 100% pointing towards the Yonkers International Trot uh, in October. Oh, is October it that 15th. one? Yep. Oh, okay. That's that's the that's the one circled on the calendar. Is that a still million and a half, or what is that now? It's a million. a million. It's a million. Interesting. Yeah. I would have thought they would have tried to go to Lexington, but maybe. And I hear the sh field is shaping up pretty nicely, though. Uh, uh, m most of the uh, entrants haven't been announced, but I hear they're going to get quite a few uh, international horses of some. Uh, I'd hope so for the international trot. Well, some years you don't always get the you know the upper echelon horses, but uh, I think they're going to get quite a nice group here. Well, with, with that in mind, though, continuing our theme here of stars we're going to see on this card, how about this race? This is a pretty good one. Forbidden trades in this race, 2019 Hamiltonian winner. So not only a, a former champion, but a former champion. We're seeing a horse still three years later, still hanging around here racing on the track. Bella Bellini, last year's Hamiltonian Oaks winner. Juju B winning one of the legs of our trotting triple crown last year, winning the Kentucky Futurity down in Kentucky. So uh, plenty of stars on this card, even throwing the hockey spots that's in this race. Uh, Quattro de Ulio, though, the morning line favorite from the rail. John, what do we think of him? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think he's got a great shot. I do think Bella Bellini is going to benefit from following behind um, Quattro de Julio as well. Uh, that last effort from Bella Bellini, I mean, it was just a. I mean, missed versatility like meant nothing. It was an absolute no try, which is why I love next level stuff in that situation. I thought that she would get the slip on, on her, and um, which she did, and, and go wire to wire. But you know what? I'm going to go with the 2021 Caesars Trotting Classic Champion. I'm going to go with Forbidden Trade to repeat. I mean. Bob's going to come down. He blasted out from the seven hole last week, uh, last year, and he uh, just hung on a three to one to win. Um, and I think that he can blast out again and sit a similar trip and hopefully go by them late. I know he's not the most talented out of this entire group, but you know what? This is a race. He's familiar with the racetrack here. I do think that he's not going to come down just to, just to throw in a dud. I, I think he's going to be put in play, and I think that uh, he's got a great shot to upset here and repeat. That's true. He's not the most talented because the most talented in this race is, of course, Bella Bellini, and she is going How to win this race. Is coming? She you guys, is. She is. You got fifty to win on her already, or what? Or oh, I'm getting my bankroll already. I've had to set some finances aside. John, John, John's right. She's had two races. She had a race in the Pocono Invitational, kind of just sat back. Miss Versatility just kind of sat back. This time around, she is drawn perfectly to put in the same kind of race she is best at, which is. You just kind of sit, grind, and then you go full assault, especially with that long of a stretch. I don't tell, I don't know how anyone can hold her off. I genuinely don't know how anyone could hold her off. She's There's winning. a couple keys to this race, right? So you have two horses that, you know, have obvious talent, Quattro de Julio and Juju B, who's nobody really said anything about yet, that have, you know, tendencies to make breaks and to make breaks in big races. And, you know, Quattro gets the rail. That's that's not maybe the best spot for him. You know, uh, Yannick just took over last time and won with him. Now he's back on. He's probably going to blast, but he's not going to be the only one. I mean, I think, you know, what does Juju be doing the race? I mean, he's very comfortable being up front whenever he's good. He has one race this year and he busted at Sciota in an open race, but they show up here. McCarthy lands here. Uh, you know, this horse won 14 races last year, almost a million dollars. He's the key to the race. I mean, if he shows up with his best race last year, he was crushing horses. He so, was I mean, so I bad. Realize he was three year old. He, I mean, he looked bad, bad, he looked bad in the post parade. Playful. He looked bad during the race. He looked bad in every. That, he did. that all being said, I mean, we actually have a, a story going to be in the, in the newsletter tomorrow, uh, Dear Funders Digest, that uh, the trainer Greg Wright said that, you know, he sh didn't have the horse sh shoot right, shot right. And uh, the horse came up sick. So if you want to use those excuses, you can. I'm 100% off Juju B unless he comes Same. out on the track looking like a million dollars. If he comes out looking great and he looks like a different horse, you know, maybe I'll change my mind. But off what I saw last time, I mean, I I'm not on him at all. But you have to make a decision on him one way or the other, I think. A $200,000 race. This is just his second start of the year. Clearly, he should have been back on the track earlier than this. I don't know how you – I don't know how he could win that early back i'm court. not saying i like him i'm saying that you have to consider what he's going to do you have to consider him especially as good as he was last year you know this See, horse... that's the beauty of bella bellini though is she's so good that all you have to do is just better and she wins you don't have to think about anything else it doesn't matter who goes to the lead how fast they go to the lead she's it's just, just that easy in front of the fit. it's just that mm. easy this, this pains me to say, so I'm going to say it as fast as I possibly can. I like Bell Bellini for post-10. Ray said he's going to have a great year, and I think she actually is going to have a great year. She's still having a great year, so Ray might actually be right there. I'll take Bell Bellini. Garnett? 
Uh, and then I'm going to go three deep in this leg of the pick four. Quattro de Julio, forbidden trade, Bella Bellini. I'm completely against Juju B. I don't like that he was off so long. And then as Derek, you know, for all the reasons Derek said, he didn't look good. He broke in the lead. I'm completely off him. So one of those three, in, 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 you know, for my pick four. All righty. Well, speaking of that pick four, we will turn to that here shortly. But let's go back to some Facebook comments quickly here, YouTube comments. Kevin Plout just says, I, uh, this is going back to race 13, Ray. I don't think catch the fire. Lightning will strike race twice for Ray. That's right. Ray did have him in on the Hamiltonian. Yeah. Day, right? Yeah. I did. All the way. And Kevin is also very disappointed. There's no Aki sponsor that handicaps in this car. It doesn't have four of seven in any races. It's unfortunate. That's true. He did. I believe that catchment have five of the eight, maybe even better than that. And Mike Bose just blamed me for eating all his pizza that day. So he had to starve. So, you know, Mike, I, I promise you I get to Philly one more time before the season closes. So I will text you. Yeah, Before you look that like day, a big bring you whatever food you want. Every time I got to Philly, Mike never had any pizza for me. I just want to thank Edison, you know, for saying what he said. So now I could say in the Caesar Striding Classic, I agree with Edison. Oh, perfect. There we go. That, there, and, yeah. just, see? and it we takes go, away Ray, having Ray. to agree with Ray, which is I'm not very that important. bad a guy. I can't when, I, I kiss dogs. Like what's when wrong? the money is down, Bella Bellini shows up. And the money's down this week, and I expect you'll see Bella Bellini showing up. So race race 15, uh, we have uh, a non-winner of the 6,000 overnight event, which we'll just kind of weave into this pick four discussion. We can each discuss very briefly our thoughts on that race as we uh, give out some pick four tickets. But again, late pick four, races 12 to 15, $20,000 guarantee pool. You've heard us talk three of those races in depth, the elevation in race 12, the pacing derby in race 13, the trotting classic in race 14, and again, that race 15, that overnight event. Uh, so we will start below me. Garnett Barnesdale, give out a pick for a ticket. Give quick thoughts on the ticket in general and race 15. I'm five deep here. I think it's wide open. I'm looking for a price. I got to use some prices. So my ticket is three, four with two, with one, six, ten, with three, four, eight, nine, ten. For 50 cents, it's $15. For a dollar, it's 30 bucks. All righty. Ray. Yeah, so I know I said it's eight dollars, but actually it's going to be more than that. Uh, three, four, six, nine, singling catch the fire, singling Bella Bellini, and uncharacteristic of me, I'm hitting all in the last. I have no thoughts. My head is empty when I look at that race. It, anything can happen, and cool. most likely the ten will probably win. Twenty dollars then. Okay. Twenty dollars. Ten or seven. Okay. Twenty dollars for Ray Gatolo. That might be the record Ray's ever spent. You know what, Ray, Ray, I think, is coming up in the money lately, but he must still be poor because, you know what, you know, Ray, I'll say this out loud here on the show. I'd like the record to show that whenever I owe any of you people money, you all just say, oh, get it to me whenever, whatever, whatever. Ray's just out here, like, every minute of every hour sending me this Family Guy gif of Brian, like, attacking <laughs> Stewie for money, trying to, like, kill him. And Ray's like, I need my money now. <laughs> well, Bella Bellini will get him rich. It'll be fine. That's right. Mike, your thoughts on the sequence. I think in the last race, you need to make a decision on the 10 or, or not. I mean, it, the 10 looks pretty obvious, has been facing a lot better horses, but it's three-year-olds, and now this horse draws 10, and, you know, really, I'm not sure what it's even doing in the race. I, I liked a couple other prices in there. The one, Northern Cadillac, I thought it was interesting, third back, and the, the three, just the starts 20 to one morning line, and Dexter sticks around the drive. The horse gets better posts. Uh, I, I'm going to spend a good bit in this ticket. Because I think, depending on what happens with uh, with Bulldog, uh, so I'll, I'll double there with with Catch the Fire. But I was one four five seven with one two, with the two eight nine ten with one three ten. There's a lot of prices in there. I think it makes worth doubling the ticket. So if it hits, it'll pay. And that is thirty two dollars. Is that right? Uh, Forty eight. Oh. Hang on, sorry, Mike. I'm trying to write it down. So I'll say, let's say yeah, it's it, 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 Mike. Can't write it down. I'll give it to you right after. Now. So one one four five seven with one two. With two eight nine ten. Two eight nine ten. With the one three ten. Isn't the thirty two? Can I not do math? No, I can't do math. That is forty eight. Okay. I wonder why you can't do math. I, I, math. I hope you can do math when it matters. I have a college math degree. You work at NASA. Derek Givner can prove this. He even saw me wander him and his daughter around my uh, old stomping grounds, University of Maryland. So I have a college math degree. I'd like to clarify, even though I cannot do math. Well, I didn't actually see the degree, but you did take me around the campus. Actually, you know, it took me forever to see it too. COVID, you know, graduating, it took them forever to send out those diplomas. I never actually saw it myself for a long time either. But, but Derek, thoughts on this pick four? Uh, I went uh, three five in the opening leg. I think Coach Stefanos the horse to beat. I like Irvin Hanover to you know be a nice price in there. Bulldog Hanover. I still think he can't lose. Nothing. Nothing has changed my mind on that. Um, I went six and ten in race fourteen. Forbidden trade in Bella Bellini. I think uh, Bella Bellini is far and away my horse to beat. But I think Forbidden trade will be 
good value to use. And, you know, he did win last year. And uh, I've said it before, when Luke Boyce shows up, uh, you might want to pay attention. And in the last leg, I have absolutely no opinion. I mean, I looked at that race for a little while and decided that I wasn't going to spend two hours watching replays of every single horse and decided to press the all button. And so I got the three, five with two with six, 10 with all it's $22. And maybe I'll come back and play a three, five with two with six, 10 with 10, you know, just because it doesn't cost me much money. It's two bucks for 50 cents. So maybe I'll play that a few extra times just because the 10 is probably the horse to beat if he shows up. And John, I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to single, uh, hold on, my ticket is, in the first leg, I'm going to end up singling Buzzsaw Rush, just because I think that, uh, I think that Coach Stefanos is going to be a favorite, and I'm, and you know what, everyone else in the next leg is going to single Bulldog, a lot of people most likely, so I'm going to go with Bulldog Hanover in race 13, so I'm going to go single, single, race 14, I'm going to go Quattro de Julio, Forbidden Trade, and Bella Bellini, those are the three to beat, in my opinion, in the 15th, in the final uh, leg, I'm going to go with the one Northern Cadillac, the five JK going west, uh, the nine crooked smile, and the ten sure thing Herman. So that's uh, fifteen dollars for a buck. That is, is that possible? The Ray Catola gets outspent on the cheap end of things by several people. That that, that might be a record. Actually, I'll, I'll go under as well. I, I will go uh, with a thirteen dollar fifty cent ticket. Three seven eight. That is Coach Stefano's can't stop blue JB Graham singling Bulldog as I think most people will be. Six, seven, ten, Bella Bellini, I will include in there. Uh, I will, I guess, be the sucker that will use UGB. Probably, probably a poor one in there. We'll throw him in there. And one, three, ten, which I think for those who didn't press the all button, pretty common horses we're looking at there in the 50s as well. So let's look there at our late pick four tickets again, that $20,000 guaranteed pool. Um, and with the couple minutes we have left here, uh, first things first, we will wrap up some other things to look forward to regarding this round table. So first things first. Tomorrow morning, if you're listening to this here live now, will be Thursday morning before the Friday evening racing action. I will be on with John of the Kitchen and Pete Cornetow on the main channel to discuss this uh, Hoosier's, Hoos- Harris Hoosier Park Caesars Trotting Classic card. So look for that. And uh, we're also looking here at having some race write-ups available on the In the Money Media Network. Mike Probosi, you can talk to us a little bit. Mike, you're also going to uh, go on and post those on Nahu Picks as well. Yeah, so we'll do our usual write-ups here, especially for all these races that we've talked about here tonight. Uh, if you ever go to Nahu Picks and see some of our race write-ups, we're going to do some of those for these uh, for these races at Hoosier. So check those out on Nahu Picks, and they're going to be on the In the Money uh, webpage, the uh, no. that website. Yeah. And Derek Givner is too good to join us next Monday, but the rest of us will be back next Monday evening. Uh, we'll not be live. It'll be re-recorded, regular podcast network, but we will go on and get you a recap show for the Heritage of Trotting Classic Cards. We will discuss those races. We'll record it Monday evening. We'll get a post on Monday evening for people to listen to the recap show of this uh, racing card. And we will go back to the Facebook comments one last time. Mike Bozich uh, saying, great job, fellas. Good luck. Mark Anderson saying, great show, show guys, as well. Kevin Plot says, I'm late to answer again, but he likes Juju B to bounce back and have a chance to win off that break. Mm-hmm. Of Could get some decent value. I'm with Edison. Ooh, there we go. And Jerry Warner trying to key in for the first time. Great show, guys. Thanks for sharing, Jerry. Thank you for tuning in as well. And with that, we are just about out of time. we got, like, five minutes left here. So, Mike, you know, we have five minutes. I know you wanted to discuss one other race in this card. If anyone's got to prepare quickly, the open on this card, Mike. Pretty good feel. Oh. Yeah, race nine, I thought, it looked like one of the better races. Uh, you get, you know, it's it's open pacers. They're going for 40000 You get a couple of horses, you know, showing up. Warway Vital shows up here. And, uh, that's a horse that doesn't necessarily hit the road very often. Uh, coming out of the race against Tattoo Artist, who we talked about, that raced against Bulldog. So, you know, you have a horse like in there, later dudes, who's been racing extremely well. Uh, you know, that horse beat Charlie May a couple races back. So, this is, uh, you know, little Rocket Man's in there also. So, that horse loves Hoosier, uh, has a huge kick. I, I just think that this is one of the better races and definitely worth watching, right? Race nine. All righty. Uh, anyone else? Uh, I don't know. Let's yeah. talk other things. Ray, Ray, I guess your answer is Bella Bellini, but what are you most looking forward to on this card? Uh, aside, aside from you getting to me what you rightfully owe uh and De- i think derek's looking for something too now what's with all the bats him. we're derek's bat, wrong derek's bat looks more uh dangerous than Ray's. yeah I, I take derek in this fight but anyway fun fact it's a giveaway a- special at yankee stadium Ooh, is that me- is that a metal bat <laughs> bat day 2017 oh wow that was for bat day i would have never guessed that and i have two of them 
<laughs> this one was just in my room, and I swung it at my knee one day when I was filming something, and I actually cracked the wood, but I didn't crack my knee. That's a fun fact. I'm gonna Yankee jump scored in two that. touchdowns today. Yeah, I'm gonna jump the Yankees scored touchdowns. Yeah, two I, I, touchdowns. I don't want to talk about. I'm. You know what I'm most looking forward to? Mike Probozzi's debut on DRF Harness. Yeah. Thursday night. Mohawk, he filled in for me, did me a huge favor. Oh, wow. He's, I'm probably going to ask him to do it a little more frequently, take a few days off here and there. If uh, if you're playing Mohawk tomorrow night, make sure you go to DRF Harness and check out Mike's picks. DRF.com slash harness if you want the exact website. Yeah. All right, That's we'll call point. this final thoughts at this point. I think it's what it's evolved into. So, Derek, final thoughts. <laughs> go to DRF.com slash harness and visit <laughs> the DRF Harness webpage. That's right. Uh, check out our newsletter, DRF Harness Digest. Check us out on Twitter. DRF Harness on Facebook. DRF Harness. Uh, did I say DRF Harness? Okay, I did. I'm just All right. I have no idea what you do, Derek. <laughs> Mike, your final thoughts that include both of our shirts, I'm assuming? <laughs> yeah, NahuPix.com for the weekend. Uh, we're going to have a lot of different stuff, usual stuff. Uh, nice card at Mohawk on Saturday. We'll definitely have some of these Hoosier write ups on there. And, uh, you know, the usual century downs, the typical Meadows is off this week, so we won't have them. But Rosecroft back in the mix. Hey, we are back at Rosecroft. Oh, Tuesday, and Thursday, we got Don on NahuPix.com tomorrow night doing Mohawk for me because I'm doing it for DRF. Hey, and, you know, speaking of which, Mike, Mike, Mike and I are going to see each other on Friday night at Penn National Racecourse. Ray Katola is right there. What? Too good to join us. <laughs> what? You're going the night I'm filling in for you? <laughs> oh, gosh, I forgot what you're actually doing. Never mind, Ray. I can't bash you for this. That's right. I appreciate Ray Katola. Hey, this Friday and Saturday, Ray, I got your final thoughts for you right here. This Friday and Saturday, check out Freehold Raceway, beautiful new HD graphics, and you will hear the beautiful voice of Ray Catolo. So press the mute button on your ADW feeds. Fair warning for this weekend. Real I might actually tune into Freehold just to hear Ray. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't tune in, you don't tune in and listen to me, Derek? Uh... <laughs> Pete, 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 I, 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 I've been told I have a real sultry voice for race calling. And it, it, it attracts people. I'm you know a what? real swooner behind the game. When you it's... listen to Ray, you never know quite what he's going to say. Like, I know what you're going to say when you call a race. I've heard announcers before. Ray, you never know what might come out of his mouth, so it's worth a listen. It pains me to say, Ray, you are very good at yes. announcing races. Thank you, and hopefully it will not be the last time I am at Freehold or any racetrack. That's Friday and Saturday. I got I, – there's one – race before the paramutual card paramutually wise 25 races this weekend at freehold right. with some what, stakes what time, action what time there's, is there's the two early races you got 27 races 12 15 p.m is the non-paramutual i think it's a new jersey sire stakes how on earth are you getting up in time for that i, I look when i think the, your your wake up tweet this morning was like 12 30 in the afternoon Derek. He won't I, go to sleep. There, there's a whole other reason that i really like bella bellini and it's that when the money is on the line I show up. <laughs> John, your final thoughts. Uh, nothing. I, I just appreciate you guys for having me and uh, for Mike allowing me to fill in for now who picks uh, tomorrow. But actually, I do want to plug in something. Uh, go to standardbreakcanada.ca. Check out I had the luxury and the pleasure of talking to uh, Paul McDonald, owner of Stockade Sealster. Um, I was worried about a potential uh, jinx piece, though. That was the only fear, like the, the cover jinx for Sports Illustrated. I... Wrote that piece, and he was a perfect six or six, and then he threw in a clunker in the um, Metro Pace Eliminations. But check out that piece. It's on Standard Bread Canada. Stock 8 Seals are an absolute pleasure. Um, I had the pleasure of talking to Paul McDonald. Yeah, you guys should check it out. You did a good job. Really good job. It's a great Thank website, you. that Standard Bread Canada. <laughs> John, I'm assuming I've only I've only seen the top half of it, but I think I safely know what it is. You, you, should, you should plug and show off that jersey some more you've got there. Yeah, exactly. MVP. Yeah, that's what MVP. I thought. Okay, good. Very good. I should have worn my Justin Tucker shirt. Uh, go, go, go Ravens. Going to beat the Bills in the Super Bowl this year, right, Garnett? wear a Ravens what are you, what are you nuts? in Ontario? AFC Championship, I guess. Not, not Super Bowl, but yeah. What are you, nuts? Yeah, pretty much. I thought the Giants were going to win it all this year. Aren't they 2-0? That's true, and their favorites at home again this weekend coming up this Monday. But because, all right, we, we have because I sh It's because I shook the head coach's hand at the training camp. They have, he hasn't lost. <laughs> See? We have fully devolved in this uh, show, so we will go on and wrap this up. Last comments I see here in a gold nap saying, great job, guys. Kevin Podge, another great roundtable. Thanks for the Wednesday Entertainment. Thank you all in the comments for tuning in, listening to us live. And again, like check out Monday evening. We will be back with the recap show for this Paras Hoosier Trotting Classic card. Again, there's over $1.4 million in Grand Circuit Stakes action on this card. Uh, highlighted, of course, by the fifth edition of the $200,000 Caesars Trotting Classic. Highlighted by the fastest 
course, in standard bread racing history, Bulldog Hanover, and plenty of other great stars of our sport will be in action. Bulldog, of course, coming up in the Harris Hoosier Pacing Derby. And again, if you're out there in Indiana, Hoosier Park, check it out. Uh, check out the handicapping contest, cash giveaways, food trucks, family fun entertainment, more. It's all part of the Harris Hoosier Park Community Night at the races during that Caesars Trotting Classic Hard. So fantastic action out there for everyone. And uh, with that, we'll go on. And just final thank yous here. I'd like to thank Ray Catola, Mike Provozzi, Garnett Burnsdale, Derek Givner, and John Rallis, my panelists, for joining me tonight. I always want to throw in our plug in for Robert Reed Jr., who's usually with us on these shows. Again, we appreciate his support of all these roundtables. We appreciate In The Money Media and Harris Hoosier Park for sponsoring this roundtable. We appreciate Pete Fornital and Jonathan Kitchen on the In The Money side. Appreciate Rick Moore and the team out there at Hoosier Park as part of their sponsorship. We appreciate their uh, sponsorship here of the show. We'll wish their on-air personalities, Michael Chamberlain, track announcer, uh, Jacob Reinheimer, as well as Emily Gaskin and the rest of their team, the best wishes for Harrah's Hoosier Park Caesar Trotting Classic Night. And last but not least, we'll thank AJ, our producer here on In The Money Media, for producing this lovely show tonight, even though he did not mute Ray like he probably should have at times, but we'll, we'll let him slide for that. And for that, I am your host, Edison Hattier, on this Perfect Trip Roundtable. That will conclude this one. We'll wish you the best of luck this Friday wagering on the Harris Hoosier Park Caesar Trotting Classic Card. And hey, we'll talk to you all Monday night to recap that great evening of action. So, Ed, when are you sending me my money? <laughs> I hope that lands on <laughs> 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 <laughs>